Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. Tonight I'm going to take two pictures of the same object using two different telescopes. The first telescope is very affordable and lightweight. You can even take it with you in a shopping bag. And my second telescope is my 80 millimeter apochromatic refractor telescope on my dedicated astrophotography setup. Let's go. I'll compare the pictures taken through each telescope at the end of the video, so you can decide which picture you like best. Let me know if you think my more expensive astrophotography setup is worth the extra effort and investment. The object I'm about to capture tonight is the Hart Nebula, also known as IC1805. The Hart Nebula is a beautiful emission nebula, 7500 light years away from Earth, located in the constellation Cassiopeia. It displays beautiful glowing ionized hydrogen gas and darker dust lanes. The nebula's intense color and heart-like shape are driven by the radiation emanating from a small group of stars near the nebula's center known as the heart of the Hart Nebula. This open cluster of stars known as Melode 15 contains some awesome bright stars that are nearly 50 times the mass of our our sun. The nebula spans almost 2 degrees in the sky, covering an area 4 times that of the diameter of the full moon. The object should be on anyone's astrophotography list, no matter what telescope you have. Now obviously the two telescopes behind me are quite different in terms of price range and specifications. But in this video I just wanted to highlight the differences between doing some casual deep sky astrophotography with an affordable telescope versus going into complete nerd mode with that dedicated astrophotography setup. In some ways the two telescopes are similar. The C-STAR S50 and my 80mm telescope are both triplet apochromatic refractor telescopes known for their sharp, well color balanced images of the night sky. The C-STAR is a bit smaller with an aperture of 50mm and a focal length of 250mm bringing the F ratio to F5. My TS apochromatic photoline refractor is nearly twice as big with an aperture of 80 mm and a focal length of 480 mm at f6. I've paired my 80 mm APO with my ZWO ASI 2600 monochrome camera which, you guessed it, has a 26 megapixel resolution and a pixel size of 3.76 micrometers. This gives me nearly a 3.2 degree field of view of the night sky which is enough to capture the whole heart nebula in just one picture. The camera also has a dedicated Pelche cooler to take pictures at below freezing temperatures to avoid nasty thermal noise in my pictures. So did anyone else notice that these carbon tripods from ZWO keep getting smaller? I mean, this is the TC40 carbon tripod that came with the ZWO AM5 mount, but with the C-STAR, let me show you. This is the, the tripod that came with the C-STAR. <laughs> I'm not sure how to vlog this. The C-STAR S50 has a much smaller integrated Sony IMX462 sensor with a pixel size of just 2.9 micrometers, which gives me a 1.3 by 0.7 degree field of view of the night sky. This is not enough to capture the whole nebula in one picture, but it is enough to capture Melode 15, the heart of the heart nebula. By the way, ZWO let me know that their new version of the C-STAR app will include an option to create a mosaic from multiple pictures of the same DSO. I'm going to use filters on both telescopes. The C-STAR S50 has a nice duo band light pollution filter which collects red and blue light often emitted by emission nebulas whereas blocking artificial light pollution in the green and yellow part of the light spectrum. I've put a dedicated filter wheel before my ASI 2600 monochrome camera with ZWO's 7 nanometer narrowband filters in HA, S2 and O3 to collect the ionized hydrogen, sulfur and doubly ionized oxygen light emitted by the Hart Nebula. So as you can see folks, I'm using the ASI Air Plus to capture the Hart Nebula tonight. Super easy to use the ASI Air Plus to control your astrophotography gear uh, using your smartphone or your tablet. And of course the C-STAR S50 also has a dedicated app you can download on your tablet or smartphone to control that telescope as well. So, <laughs> looks like the weather is clearing up. Let's capture the Hart Nebula.
So hi folks, it's been a couple of days and I just wanted to give you some disclosures before showing you the two final pictures. Now first of all, with the Seastar S50, this is an altitude azimuth mount, so my exposure time for each individual photo was limited to 10 seconds. Also, after about an hour, I started to see some field rotation in the picture, so my total exposure time is about one and a half hours with the Seastar S50, and I spent maybe 20 minutes uh, processing the picture of the sea star because I think that's what you would do when engaging in some casual deep sky astrophotography with an affordable telescope right now on the other hand with my dedicated astrophotography setup I went all the way so I took my narrowband camera my narrowband filters and I took five minute exposure pictures uh, using my three narrowband filters HAS2 and O3 my total exposure time was about seven hours and I took quite some time to process uh, the picture using PixInsight and Photoshop so let me know if you think that all the extra money, time and effort is actually worth it when you compare the two pictures. 